in Islamic mythology or folklore. Any malevolent or evil spirit is generally considered to be a jinn. However, the details on some of these creatures can actually be quite interesting. Looking into some of those details, I'll ask this question. What is a ghoul? A ghoul is a mythical creature that, although was popularized by Islamic mythology, have their roots deep in pre-Islamic writings from their associations with Mesopotamian cultures. They were first introduced to the Western world through a collection of tales entitled 1001 Nights, that work later being translated by a French author. There are those who are of the mind that this translating author exaggerated some of his translations or even further, added stories to the collection that were not originally there. Nonetheless, the existence of ghouls is substantiated by the Islamic text known as the Hadith. Unlike the Quran, the Hadith is merely a collection of words, actions, and approvals from the Prophet Muhammad. Ghouls are said to have been a creation of Iblis. Iblis rebelled against Allah after the creation of man which Iblis claimed were inferior creatures that he would not bow to. Allah was said to have forgiven Iblis and held off his punishment until Judgment Day. In the meantime, however, the creation of beings such as the ghouls were considered part of the pursuit of Iblis to attain revenge against man. In Mesopotamia, the Galu demons were known to be part of the underworld and were thought to carry off their victims to the land of the dead where they would consume them. The ghouls of Arabic mythology have very similar attributes. Ghouls are said to be humanoid creatures that most likely walk on two legs, although tend to be hunched over and even crawl at times. Being shapeshifters, they can appear as either male or female, but tend towards female so that they can lure unsuspecting men to their doom. Ghouls are known to inhabit those places that are uninhabited, most notably burial grounds such as graveyards, cemeteries, and abandoned buildings in general. There are some tales where these creatures of the desert are described as being eaters of human flesh and drinkers of their blood, all the way to undead creatures that consume human remains. On top of all that, these creatures were known to be grave robbers as well, and the connotation of that has stuck by the name. A popular tale where a ghoul makes an appearance, doing exactly what they're best known for, is a story entitled The King's Son and the She-Ghoul. As you may have guessed, the story centers around the son of a king and his encounters while out hunting with the king's vizier. One day, the prince was out on a hunt in the wilderness with a party of his men and the king's personal vizier as well. The vizier had been appointed by the king to follow the young prince wherever he may go. On this day, the party of men came upon a marvelous wild beast, which was more than the party could have hoped for. The vizier urged the young prince to follow after the beast on his own and claim the victory of catching it for himself. The prince, eager to gain this honor, did exactly what he was told by the vizier and set out after the beast into the wilderness on his own. Eventually, however, he not only lost track of the beast, but he lost track of his way as well. The prince, now lost in the wilderness and alone, soon forgot about the beast he had been tracking. Even further, he eventually came upon a young princess at the side of the road, who was herself alone as well. The young prince inquired of the girl where it was that she had come from. When she was able to, for a moment, hold back her tears, she replied to the young prince, I am the daughter of an Indian king. I was riding in the wilderness and dozed off, and in my sleep I fell off of my horse and have now found myself alone and helpless. Upon hearing what had happened to the young girl, the prince took pity on her, put her on the back of his horse, and decided to ride along with her. As they passed by some old ruins out there in the wilderness, the young girl told the prince that he should stop by the ruins so that she could go and relieve herself in private. 
Not seeing an issue with this, he led her down by the ruins, and she quickly made her way inside and out of sight of the prince. The prince, being eager to continue his journey, eventually made his way into the ruins after her to see where it was she had gotten off to. He finally found her in a room speaking to three other figures who were small and sitting next to a fire. He peeked his head into the room and listened to their conversation. The young girl spoke to the three figures and said, I have brought you good fat boy. To which all three small figures bustled with glee. They replied, Mother, bring him to us so that we may feed on his innards. At this point, the young prince knew that he was not dealing with a princess, but a she-ghoul instead. The young and terrified prince prayed to Allah to save him from his enemies. This prayer was heard by the she-ghoul, and upon such, she allowed the boy to escape. When the prince did return home to his father, the father had the vizier put to death for putting his son in such danger. In some accounts, the prophet Muhammad completely dismisses the existence of ghouls. Yet and still, in other accounts, he gives advice on how to banish the creatures. One of his companions, Abu Asid al-Sadi, states that ghouls lived in pre-Islamic times and that Allah no longer permitted them to exist. While a different companion of the Prophet, bin al-Khattab, was said to have put a ghoul to the sword on the side of the road while on a trip to Syria. Either way, the ghoul can still find a footing in contemporary cultures today, where their grim and ghastly atmosphere along with their association with death and consuming human flesh, holds true in pictures, animations, and storytelling.